everyone now let us discuss about 2023 ICD 10 cm coding guidelines for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mrsa conditions and zika virus this comes under chapter 1 certain infectious and parasitic diseases by this topic we will complete all the topics related to chapter 1 now what is mrsa mrsa is nothing but methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus this triad of bacteria they are resistant to antibiotics hence the name resistant mrsa triad is resistant to penicillins methicillin and cephalosporins also regarding mrsa coding there are four guidelines related to it based upon the selection and sequencing of mrsa codes they are combination codes for mrsa infection other codes for mrsa infection methicillin susceptible staphylococcus aureus mssa this is susceptible that is it is not resistant and mrsa colonization and finally mrsa colonization and infection there are four scenarios and we will discuss the coding guidelines regarding this four scenarios first combination codes for mrsa when a patient is diagnosed with an infection that is due to methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus mrsa and that infection has a combination code that includes the causal organism then assign the appropriate combination code for that condition example is code a41.02 this is a combination code for sepsis due to methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus two codes are not required only one code is sufficient a41.02 indicates sepsis due to methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and similarly pneumonia pneumonia due to methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus is given by the code j15.212 and one important note is whenever we are assigning these combination codes do not assign code b95.62 which is nothing but methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus infection as a cause of disease classified elsewhere as an additional code because the combination code includes the type of infection and the mrsa organism so there is no need to indicate another code to specify the organism so whenever you, you are using a combination code for mrsa infection you should not code b95.62 and additionally z16.11 which indicates resistance to penicillin as an additional diagnosis this is the first guideline in simple terms whenever combination code is there you need to assign only one code and you should not assign code b95.62 or z16.11 next scenario other codes for mrsa infection when there is no combination code and uh, infection is due to mrsa then you need to code two codes first you need to code the infection code next b95.62 methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus infection as a cause of disease classified elsewhere for mrsa infection and here you should not assign z16.11 resistance to penicillin because in the name itself it is indicating methicillin resistant so you should not use another code z16.11 whenever there is whenever other infection is due to mrsa and there is no combination code then you need to code two codes first infection code followed by b95.62 that is second guideline coming to third guideline methicillin susceptible staphylococcus aureus and mrsa colonization whenever colonization is documented mrs you need to code z22.322 for mrsa colonization and z22.321 for mssa colonization and finally the fourth guideline is mrsa colonization and infection whenever colonization and infection is also present in that case if the patient is documented as having both mrsa colonization and infection during the hospital admission two codes may be assigned first z22.322 which to indicate carrier or susceptible carrier of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus and the code for mrsa infection here the code for mrsa infection will be the pdx and then the carrier code
Now some more points regarding the colonization. The condition or state of being colonized or carrying MSSA or MRSA is called as colonization or carriage. While an individual person is described as being colonized or being a carrier. Condition is called as colonization or carriage and the individual is called as carrier or being colonized. Colonization means that MSSA or MRSA is present on or in the body without necessarily causing illness. Patient may be asymptomatic but he is simply a carrier that is indicated by colonization. And colonization is not necessarily indicative of a disease process or a cause of specific condition the patient may have unless documented as such by the provider. And a positive MRSA colonization test might be documented by the provider as MRSA screen positive or MRSA nasal swab positive. A positive MRSA colonization test may be documented by the provider as MRSA screen positive and or MRSA nasal swab positive. So simple colonization does not necessarily indicate a disease process or a cause of specific condition of the patient unless until it is documented as such by the provider. Now let us see an example. Patient presents with Pneumonia due to methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. So the appropriate code is J15.212. Pneumonia due to methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Next example. Patient presents with sepsis due to methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. Here the code is A41.01. Sepsis due to methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. The next code. Next Example, patient presents with pneumonia due to methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. In the first example, it is methicillin resistant. And in the second example, patient is presents with pneumonia due to methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. So, the code is J15.211. Pneumonia due to methicillin susceptible Staphylococcus aureus. So, whenever there is a combination code, you need to code only one code. You should not you code B95.62 or Z16.11. That is the guideline. Now, coming to Zika virus infections. There are two scenarios or two guidelines in case of Zika virus. The first one is code only confirmed cases. Code only a confirmed diagnosis of Zika virus with the code A92.5 to indicate Zika virus disease as documented by the provider. But there is an exception to the hospital inpatient guidance, guideline in section 2 H. In this content, that is especially for inpatient admissions, confirmation does not require documentation of the type of test performed. Physician's diagnostic statement, that is test results or are not required. A simple physician diagnostic statement that the condition is confirmed is sufficient. And this code should be assigned regardless of the state of mode of transmission. So code only confirmed cases. Confirmation does not require documentation of test type. Simple physician diagnostic statement that the condition is confirmed is sufficient. The next what shall we do if the provider documents susceptible, possible or probable Zika. If the provider documents susceptible, possible or probable Zika, do not assign code A92.5. Assign a code explaining the reason for encounter such as fever, rash or joint pain or Z20.212 if the patient comes in contact with Zika virus. Z20.821 to indicate contact with and susceptible to Exposure to Zika virus. Z20.821. Now let us see an example. A patient presents with Zika virus infection. Here the physician is documenting Zika virus infection. So simply you can code A92.5. Zika virus infection. Second example. A patient presents to ED with fever and chills. Patient is suspected, suspected to have Zika virus. Patient's friend recently diagnosed with Zika virus. 
so patient has been suspected to exposure of zika virus so first you need to code the condition that is fever r50.9 fever unspecified followed by z20.821 contact with and suspected exposure to zika virus whenever the physician documents suspected probable possible then you should not code a92.5 you should code only confirmed cases and that confirmation does not require documentation of test simple physician doc physician's diagnostic statement is sufficient by this we complete the zika virus coding guidelines thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and cpc training